I'm going to show you the all decisive game of the final of the Women's World Cup between Alexandra Goryachkina from Russia against Nurkul Salimova from Bulgaria, who had an amazing run. She qualified totally unexpected for the candidates tournament by reaching the final and playing in the final. Uh, she's the underdog. Uh, Goryachkina is the big favorite by uh, rating wise. She is about 150 uh, rating points. Uh, higher rated than uh, than her opponent. But, you know, in finals, anything can happen. And so far, Salimova has played very impressively. She put Goryachkina under pressure, had big chances to uh, to win in the classical portion. Also, in the first tiebreak game, she was winning with the white pieces, but slipped her advantage. And now she's playing with black in the fourth game. Let's see what is going to happen. Goryachkina plays with white, the Catalan opening, d4, knight f6, c4, e6, g3. This is the move characterizing the opening. Fianchettoing the uh, bishop to the uh, long diagonal, d5, bishop g2, bishop e7, sort of classical variation. This has been played hundreds of thousands of times before. And Goryachkina uh, now faces the move, d takes uh, c4. And she replies with queen c2. And Salimova thinks... Okay, I'm going to stick to the pawn with the move b5. This is a sort of modern treatment of, uh, of this line. Uh, but of course, you're sticking to the pawn, at least for the moment, but you're also weakening this diagonal. And also the pawn on b5 can be uh, targeted right away with the move uh, a4. White is putting a lot of pressure there. And this is um, an interesting uh, development in this opening because the move bishop b7 was not known until a few years. You're basically saying that, okay, you can win the pawn back as white, you're allowed to take the pawn on uh, b5, but black wants to complete her development. Plays the move a6 and um, basically says, okay, I want to exchange pieces and with my bishop on b7, not much can uh, can happening. So um, there is knight c3, a takes b5, rook takes a8, bishop takes a8, knight takes b5. And white has uh, regained the pawn and also the pawn on c4 is about to uh, to drop and therefore the main continuation is considered to be bishop d5 protecting the pawn getting ready to play c5 and white is maybe a little bit better but in most of the games black um, managed to hold on in uh, in this line but salimova played the move c5 and i'm not sure if she messed up her uh, preparation or she uh, prepared it, in fact, it's, uh, it's an interesting move, c5, but white can also capture the pawn. If you do recapture, then, uh, well, the pawn on c4 can still be taken and white remains the pawn up. And that's not what you, what you want to do. Knight a6 played, intending to recapture with a knight, uh, if possible. Queen takes c4, bishop d5. So rather than recapturing, uh, you're attacking the queen. Queen got to move again. And here, I think knight takes c5 is a reasonable move, but white is just a pawn up. The question is if this is going to be enough to convert the advantage. But Salimova played instead a move bishop to e4. It's a typical technique in this Catalan that you're trying to harass the queen as, uh, as long as you can to force the queen to go to an inferior square. Queen went back to d1. And now Salimova goes for bishop takes c5, allowing the exchange of queens. But... Maybe you can just go away with the queen to attack the knight, trying to get the rook over to the d-file, and then later on you uh, try to regain the pawn. With queens on the board, there's definitely a bit more play for black. But bishop takes c5 was played, and Goryachkina didn't hesitate. Swap the queens. Queen takes the 8, rook takes the 8, knight goes back to c3, attacking the bishop. Bishop goes back, and white is going to initiate more exchanges with the move rook d1 rook takes d1 knight takes d1 and you know if all the minor pieces are off the board there's just one extra pawn and that's going to be decisive so i think things have gone wrong for black this opening experiment with the idea to try to equalize out of the opening has backfired this is playing for two results and it's just a very big extra pawn for white bishop to a4 to attack the knight, knight to c3, bishop to c2, bishop is standing there, and now knight e1, trying to kick the bishop out, bishop to b3, knight d3, attacking the bishop, bishop goes back, and now white 
comes up with the plan trying to centralize the king because with the bishop on b3 you need to make some additional efforts to kick this bishop out so that the b pawn can be pushed later on black also activates her king h3 king to uh, to e7 king e1 knight d7 trying to get a knight around bishop to d2 and it's a slow game but white is not in a rush the only thing you got to avoid is that you just drop your b pawn any uh, any time so bishop uh, c4 knight a4 bishop to d4 bishops are kind of annoying they take away a lot of squares but finally white is able to um, offer the exchange of uh, of knights knight before knight takes before bishop takes before king to d8 bishop to c3 now you're forcing the exchange of bishops if the bishop goes away pawn on g7 can be taken e5 bishop takes d4 e takes d4 now it's an isolated pawn but is this pawn a weakness or an asset white played b4 so that uh, the b pawn um, gets activated as well king c7 king d2 king to d6 and now the knight to b2 to attack the bishop bishop goes back to b5 and you can see that with this configuration of bishop and pawn all these squares in front of the white king are covered which means that the white king cannot be activated what is the technically speaking the best move here for white definitely the move e3 why because after d takes e3 the king is just active uh, it's a free versus free on the king side you have an extra b pawn and i think white should be able to convert with the help of possible exchanges you can try to make more progress but that pawn on d4 stay there and white play the move bishop e4 attacking the pawn on h7 after knight f6 bishop to d3 you're offering the exchange of bishops but after the bishop goes away the, the king can still not approach the d pawn h4 because the pawn on h3 was under threat knight d5 attacking the b pawn if you take on h7 well you can just take the pawn on b4 more and more pawns are coming off the board and i don't think this was a good idea to allow the exchange of b pawns so things were not played optimally by goryachkina she's still better she decides not to take the pawn on h7 but goes for bishop c4 so that after knight takes b4 pawn on f7 was captured and you you see that of course the the black pawns uh, on d4 versus the pawns on uh, g7 and h7 they are further separated from each other which means it's uh, it's more vulnerable and if white is able to win the pawn on d4 that would be huge but so far the d pawn is still there knight c4 check king e7 knight e5 bishop goes to f5 bishop c4 king d6 attacking the knight knight goes back and now the king is in time to keep the pawn defended you see all the time that d pawn even though it's isolated white is unable to exert pressure on it bishop to d3 played offering the exchange of pieces and from a principal point of view you would think okay let's keep pieces on the board but after knight takes d3 e takes d3 i really doubt white is able to make progress because with his bishop you're keeping pressure against the pawn on d3 forever white cannot move around with her king because the pawn will be hanging if you put your knight somewhere to protect the pawn well that's just really passive you need both your king and knight to um, to make progress and i don't see how white should be able to do so although salimova played the move bishop e6 there's still nothing wrong but knight takes d3 was a nice way to simplify and create a weakness in white's position now white maintains a grip on the d3 square knight d5 knight g2 probably intending to go knight f4 g5 offering the exchange of pawns take take and you see that the pawn covers the f4 square so the knight can't go there the knight comes back and uh, well there are various options but uh, i like bishop g4 to prevent the knight from coming to f3 if you do so you can simply take on f3 and after ef3 i guess the king will come around and black is very close to obtain the draw because how to create a passed pawn that's not simple but instead knight f6 was played now the knight comes to f3 you're attacking the pawn g4 knight g5 hitting the bishop bishop to d5 and if you play something like um, bishop g6 with the idea to go with your king very soon to uh, to d3 uh, that looks uh, that looks very nice but uh, bishop f5 was uh, was played 
And after uh, king d6, I mean, you should try to get your king back to e5 to be closer to both your pawns. The king is not doing well on c5, so king d6 played. But also here, I really think that king d3 is a nice move with serious winning chances. It's not easy, but let's see what Goryachkina did. She played knight h7. She really wants to force the exchange of knights because she says that if knights are coming off the board, let's say knight takes h7, bishop takes h7, it's three versus two, and this pawn on g4 can easily be attacked by the um, by white's uh, light squared bishop. But instead, after knight h7, Salimova comes up with a big move. She doesn't move the knight away, she plays bishop to e4. I like this idea very much. After bishop takes e4, knight takes e4, you're giving a check, you're hitting the pawn on f2. If you try to win the pawn on d4, you take on f2, king takes d4, knight h1, and you win the pawn on g3. That's going to end in a draw. If you go back with the king to e1 to try to save all your pawns, now the king comes to e7. And look at this position. This knight on h7 is just trapped. Can't go anywhere. The knight on e4 covers the g5 square. The only way to avoid the loss of the knight, otherwise black is just going to play king f7, king g7, is to play f3, but that's going to end in a draw. All the pawns are coming off the board. So after bishop e4, knight takes f6 was played, bishop takes f5, and now all of a sudden we have a three versus two with bishop versus knight. Is white able to pull off something um, something very special here. Is White able to, to win it? That's the big question. Practically with both players playing on like, let's say 10, 20 seconds, if they're playing on increment, 10 seconds every move, things are not simple. Knight h5, king e5, knight f4, bishop e4. Black is still having this nice grip on the third rank. So there is no progress for White yet. Knight d3, king d6, king c2, bishop d5. King b2, bishop c4, king a3, king d5, king b4, bishop a6. Now the big question is if black is really going to be afraid of a king coming around. Well, let's say if you go king a5, the bishop goes to c4, king b6, and now black's king becomes active. With king e4, you're putting massive pressure against the knight, against the pawn on e2 indirectly as well. This is way too dangerous. Don't do that. So... Goryachkina said, okay, I can't do that. I should stay close with my king to the pawn on e2. Bishop c4, king c2, king e4, king d2. Of course, there is no waste of time. You can just play around with your pieces and see if a mistake is going to be played. And, well, white goes back and forth. Bishop c4, of course, always got to be careful that you don't place your own pieces in a knight fork. But so far, black is too active. Knight c2, bishop a6 was played here, but wait a moment. There was a very interesting idea here to take with the bishop on e2. And now the recapture, king takes e2 is even losing for white because after d3, king d2, d takes c2, king takes, you're going with your king to f3 and the two other pawns are going to, pick, going to be picked up and black is winning here. You can't do that. Instead, after bishop takes e2, knight takes d4, is still a possibility when after um, bishop uh, a6 the game continues but having traded off one more pair of pawns is of course a big achievement and black should have no problems holding it but bishop a6 played knight to e1 bishop b5 and here Goryachkina comes up with a new plan she plays f3 she wants to create a passed pawn g takes f3 e takes f3 and even she get two connected passed pawns king d5 but also black has a passed pawn to uh, reckon with. So knight d3, bishop c4, knight f2, king e5, knight d3, king d5, knight e1, king e5. Black can just wait, keep the pawn protected. Also try to provoke white from uh, moving the pawn to uh, to f4 so that the king can come in. If you uh, if you play something like uh, king e2, there is this move d3, trying to um, trade off the d pawn for the pawn on f3. That's also going to be a draw. So knight e1 back. King f5, king e2, bishop c4, king f2. Now the king is trying to support its pawns. Be careful. If you play the move d3, that's too ambitious. It allows king e3 and the d pawn is going to be taken next. But after king e5, knight to g2 was played, bishop to b5, knight f4, bishop c4. 
White is not making progress. The F pawn is not going to be activated very soon. Knight g5, bishop c4, knight e4, bishop d3, threatening to take the knight, knight e2, bishop b5, king to g2, and the move king d5 was played. But frankly, I think also a move like d3 is very interesting with the idea to infiltrate with your king because white's king is too far away. If you go king f2, I go king d4. The idea to play g4, bishop uh, c6, trying to keep in charge of, uh, of these pawns. The king is close enough once the pawns are starting to push. I think white is unable to make progress. But instead, king d5 was played. It's also still fine. g4, bishop d3, king g3, bishop b5, king f4. Wait a second, guys. The king all of a sudden comes into play and... The big question is how should you deal with potential threats of an advance of the king and uh, together with the pawns, this is starting to look very dangerous. Salimova, under big pressure, played here to move bishop to e2. But I think the bishop is on the wrong side of the board. It's not able to stop the pawns. You can attack the pawns from behind, but once the pawns are moving, the bishop is really badly placed. Much better is the move bishop to d7. For instance, if you play uh, the move g5 now, I'm gonna play the move d3. So looking for counterplay, the bishop also prevents the king from um, supporting the g-pawn any further. If you go king e3, then king e5 is a very nice move. Every king takes d3, it's king f4, and you're close to the pawn. If you go g6, it's bishop, g, uh, bishop f5, and you're picking up the pawn with a check. If knight e4, you take the pawn on um, f3, and very soon you can just sacrifice the bishop for the pawn and that's going to be a draw. Let's have a look what happened in the game after bishop e2, king f5, bishop d3, king f6. This is a huge difference and look at this bishop. It's not really stopping the pawns and it's in fact even standing in the way of the d-pawn. Bishop c2 play, g5, the pawn is unstoppable. Three squares away from b, a new queen. If you play d3, I'm going to play g6, king d4, g7. It's game over. Bishop b3 is not even possible because the knight protects that square. So black didn't know what to do. Played bishop d3. Now g6 is played. King c6. It's not really clear what this king is going to do. There are various moves. You can advance the f-pawn. You can also advance the g-pawn, threatening to get a new queen. Bishop h7 only move. King f7, threatening to promote a pawn. But wait a second. If you go king d5 here, which was played, and now g8 queen would be a huge blunder because of bishop takes, king takes, king e5. And the only thing the king has to do is win that pawn on f3 to secure a draw. King f7, king f4, king e6, king e3. If the knight moves, the pawn is no longer defended. If you go king d5, one final trap, don't take the knight because of king takes d4 and the f pawn is out of reach. White is too fast. But the key move here for black to save the game is the move d3. So you're still attacking the knight. Now, the knight got to move, because if you move the king, I'm going to take the knight, and black is also very fast. This is a draw. Of course, g8 queen is not forced. The bishop is badly placed, and Goryachkina's move is much stronger. f4, d3 on the board, and here again, be careful. Don't play f5, believing that you can advance the pawn, because there's bishop takes f5. After getting a new queen, there's bishop e6, with a discovered check. Sorry, no, with a discovered check with a skewer, you're winning, um, you're winning the queen, and that's going to be just a draw. So you got to be precise. King e7 played first, very accurate. After king d4, now it's time to play f5. Bishop takes f5, can just be met by g8 queen. So king e3, black is looking for counterplay. Knight c4, king to d4 back, knight to b2. White is simply thinking, okay, I want to sacrifice. My knight for the d-pawn to take out all the sting of the position. After d2, the pawn comes to f6, threatening f7. King c3, attacking the knight. And now, once again, you got to be alert. f7 is a mistake because of king takes b2, g8, queen, bishop takes queen. White gets a new queen, but also black gets a new one. So this is queen versus queen, and it's a draw. you got to be precise. You better secure your knight, play the move knight d1 with check. King to c2, now the knight defends the pawn from the other side and 
there's not much black can do. The connected past pawns are too strong. After d1, queen, knight takes d1, king takes d1, white play the move f7, and on the next move, a new queen will be made. Sally Molfa's tournament is over. She had a tremendous run, but in the end, it's Goryachkina who wins the World Cup and takes home $50,000. That's not bad for just a few weeks of playing chess. Congrat congratulations to her. Also, both players qualified for the candidates tournament. So we will see them both back in Toronto uh, next year. The strongest eight players will determine who is going to challenge the world champion uh, Ju and Jun. So that's going to be very interesting and a big opportunity for, for uh, Sally Mofa as well. And of course, she also had a very nice uh, money prize. $35,000 is not bad if you started the tournament not thinking that you can uh, reach it to the final. At least that's what I think. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this amazing game, 105 moves. Please subscribe to the channel. And then of course we continue in the next days with the final of the Men's World Cup. See you there.